We need Bob Chapman. We need to have him make some sense out of all of this nonsense. California budget is already in the red (laughs) ten weeks after they passed it. Can you believe it? California's again in trouble. And you know, I gotta ask, are they still writing IOUs for people? People getting paid out there? I don't know. We never hear the end of the story. And the banks, oh man, they're at the end of their reserve. What is happening? Well, Bob Chapman joins us, who is the editor of the International Forecaster newsletter, the International Forecaster. Dot com. Bob Chapman, thank you so much for joining us today on the Power Hour. Well, thank you for having me again, and I feel very exuberant because I have, and Judy has, just just taken our Strauss hot drops. <laughs> Good for you. And we have been you. taking them now for seven years. Seven years of Strauss hot drops. And we are drops. very healthy, and I think that's one of the reasons, certainly in the case of Judy. So I had to say that. I don't plug many products, but when, you know, it saves somebody's life, well, I think that's appropriate. You know, I had a pharmaceutical rep call me the other day, and he said, I just want to ask you, Joyce, off air, are Strauss heart drops as good as you say they are? Because he said, I I know about left ventricular ejection fraction testing. And he said, are you seeing a difference? Have you seen a difference? And I said, absolutely, yes. And it is incredible. People cannot believe they work so well. Now, your wife, Judy, was supposed to get a um, uh, bypass, a second bypass. How many years ago? Uh, Six and a half. And she started taking the Strauss heart drops instead and has used Strauss heart drops instead of the second bypass, correct? That's correct, and she has now been in the medical journal three times. No kidding. Yes. Man, uh, I would like to see that. Well, uh, it would be in Spanish. <laughs> really? Okay. <laughs> and uh, But that's what the doctor uh, has said. He's an eminent uh, uh, cardiologist and uh, surgeon, uh-huh. and uh, he said that it's impossible. Uh, you should have had... The other side done six months after uh, because uh, you still smoke, and uh, and that's what everybody else has had. Well, Judy didn't have that because Judy took Strauss hot drops. Wow. Well, this is n- not a plug, but it is a plug for Strauss heart drops because if we can save somebody going through a bypass procedure, if we can save somebody having a cardiac arrest from an uh, uh, MI, uh, myocardial infarction, then it is worth it, listeners. It is, believe me, worth it. And Strauss heart drops are inexpensive in comparison to getting a bypass, I guarantee you, or having to be hospitalized for an MI. So please take advantage of getting uh, the Strauss heart drops. We have them at the Power Hour. Call 877-817-9829. Now let's move to something else, and that is... The I'm banks. not going to get on a plane anymore. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> I mean, this is unbelievable. Do you fidget? Truly unbelievable. And I, you know, everybody in America should just stop taking planes. Mm-hmm. Maybe they get the message. That's right. That's right. Start driving. Or maybe, maybe even wherever they do that, whether it's on trains or they certainly can't do it on uh, local commuting buses and and streetcars or whatever they got in your city, uh, but. Uh, that would be just madness. But to do it on the planes, just stop going. That's right. That's right. I would love to see it. I would love to see all of those airlines take a big dive, and then only the businesses would be the ones that are having to support it. Now, that's not a good thing because we want businesses to flourish. But, you know, it's a message that we need to give to them, and it is not no, but heck no. And if people started walking, you know, maybe they take a bus because they should be walking. Get up 30 minutes earlier and walk. <laughs> And maybe they should be uh, driving. So whatever, listeners, but it's just craziness. It's part of the chaos that's going on right now. You know, the banks are out of money. It looks as though the FDIC, and I will tell you this, I told our listeners, I got from an inside source, the banks are being asked to prepay three years in advance to the FDIC fund. I mean, the banks I talked to, the the people that well would talk with me about this, said they can't afford to do three years in advance. What do you know about that? Well, it is the, exactly the way you say it is. And the amount of money is, uh, I think, $468 billion. And, uh, it, it, you know, they just can't carry it. Uh, the FDIC is broke. What does that mean? It means that 
the FDIC supposedly doesn't want to take money from the government, but they do have a line of credit with the Treasury for $500 billion. So the banks are going to have their way. I don't think they're going to come up with the money. And uh, if they do, they do. But I think in addition to that, that the FDIC is going to have to borrow $100 billion, and that's ready for them, from the Treasury Department. The Ponzi now, scheme? Draw draw how much money from the Ponzi scheme? Well, I mean, what isn't the that Treasury what it is? Does, they'll send a note over to the Fed and say, please print this up or credit us on our account with um, $100 billion. And then once the transfer is made, which is monetization, because the Fed doesn't have the money, they make it up out of thin air. Uh, they then make a bookkeeping entry digitally uh, for the FDIC agency. Now, let me give you uh, a, a depth of what's going on. There are 8,400 8, banks in America, approximately. 3,200 to 4,200 will go, go under in the next four years. Wait a minute. How many banks will go under in the next two years? No, the next four years. 3,200 to 4,200. Between one-third and one-half of the banks are going down or be, being absorbed. Oh, absorbed. Now, okay, good point. Absorbed uh, by bigger banks who are all bank, bankrupt, incidentally. And that's one of the reasons that the TARP funds went to these institutions and even seven insurance companies. And you don't get TARP funds unless they want you to use them, in the case of the banks, or to keep you in business, in the case of the banks, the brokerage houses, and the insurance companies as well. Seven major insurance companies took billions of dollars. Why would you take it? Because you're on the edge of insolvency. Getting back to the banks, you would need $700 billion to cover 1% of the insured assets of the banks in America. Incredible. Incredible. So there is no insurance. And that's why we have continued to tell people, get out of CDs. Only keep, if, as an individual, enough money in the bank for three months operating you know, the money that you need to pay your bills. Correct. If you're a business, you need six months. Other than that, get all your money out of the banks. And the same thing goes for cash value and life insurance policies and annuities unless they're holding bonds because most of them are in stocks and 5 to 10 percent of their holdings in those uh, life insurance policies and annuities uh, are in assets that are not easily saleable. And so you want to be out of there. Where do you go? You go to gold and silver related assets. It's very simple. There is no other place to go. And that's why you've seen gold is trading close to 1060 this morning. 95% of the analysts, economists, expert, newsletter writers said it was going down. They were, they were wrong again and again and again and again. And so this is where you got to be. If you want to protect your wealth, that's where you have to be. Well, it seems to me that there is more and more uh, focus on gold. I mean, even on television now, we're actually starting to see them say it without practically using a four-letter word before it. Because it used to be that they would act as though, gold, what is wrong with you? I mean, get shares, get something of value. And now they're starting to give it a little bit of respect. But I think they've known all along. And But it means the 23-year-old, you know, info babes, though, that, you know, probably don't know gold from... Uh, uh, you know, the value of gold anyway that are doing this. But it seems to me that the comments, I listen to the comments, the kind of offhanded comments which they make, they're starting to talk about gold with more respect. They are. And um, I've known Bill Keen and um, the other girl, lady, who's been with him for years on CNBC, I knew them from the old days in Los Angeles from FNN, and I used to go on there all the time. Ron Insano was there, and Ed Hart was there. Ed is one of the greatest journalists that America has ever seen. He's since deceased, and another victim of smoking. And um, uh, they know darn right well all about gold and silver. 
because I was there, and so was Ned teaching them. Ed was one of my clients when I was a broker. And so they know full well, and I've seen them recently twice attack gold along with those uh, uh, one of those those other women there who are very anti-gold as well. And uh, they know what they're doing. Believe me, they're instructed to do that because I know the background of at least two of them and, and Sonner as well. In fact, I talked to Ron about, oh, maybe seven years ago, six years ago, of going on CNBC and debating Greenspan, and they wouldn't let me because uh, the management said, you're a street fighter and you'll make them look like an idiot. And I said, well, that's what I'm supposed to do. And uh, they said, no, we can't have you on wow. at any time. 